Take a look around. Unless you're watching this video from the Himalayas, chances are you're surrounded by cement in various forms. From the walls that protect you to the towering skyscrapers you see while driving to even the roads you drive on, cement is the silent hero that makes our lives better every day. But have you ever wondered how this remarkable material is produced in one of the world's largest cement factories? And how young graduates like Anjali are helping to ensure the world doesn't come to a halt? Let's find out. We are at the Ultra Tech plant uh, in Chitorgar and uh, we are meeting uh, somebody who has been working very passionately in this particular place and she's going to tell us what you can learn about the manufacturing of cement and how you can make a career in this particular place. All right, so as we were mentioning, I have with me uh, Anjali, who we are talking to today for us to understand this plant a little better, her journey a little better. So tell us a little bit about yourself first to begin with. When I was in school, I was going through the career options and to my surprise, I found this particular branch of chemical engineering. Let me tell you, it is not at all about chemistry. I did my chemical engineering from Banastali Vidya B. Uh, which is a whole girls university and after that I got an offer from ABG there was, it was a very rigorous selection process I would say and that's how I got selected I'll, I'll talk a little more about that but before that from an all girls uh, college to probably an all men setup how was that transformation like for you? Okay, so when I joined here, there were just uh, three to four girls working over here and I was the fifth one who joined and it, I thought that it is going to be challenging for me but it wasn't and that was really surprising though because uh, ABG is inculcating women into its culture and uh, you can see that uh, there are amazing women leaders working at amazing positions. So Anjali, let's talk about uh, the PLP stand now. Uh, that's probably the time when you got to know about ABG and its principles, its values and what kind of work you're supposed to do as well. So what was that like? When did you, you know, come to know that this probably is a place that I would want to spend one, two, three, four, I don't know for how many years. Okay, so uh, obviously I knew about ABG from a long time back but I got to know about the ALP program through my seniors and uh, at that moment I realized that I want to work here because uh, they told me about the working culture, the responsibilities they had, the kind of work they were doing. It all fascinated me. I was fascinated by the fact that uh, they were working inside the plant. What I have studied till now, I get to see it in action. So my stint started with a one month induction inside the plant and in that uh, we visited mines from where we are raising limestone and then after uh, that I got to see the thermal power plant. We have our own thermal power plant. Though I am working in a cement plant but these are things that are supporting the cement plant to function. And I realized that ABG is so strong in its value and the kind of work it is doing for nation's infrastructure because obviously cement is there present in roads and railway tracks and everything and I feel a kind of uh, I feel a sense of pride in all of this. How is the growth when you once you come in here how is the growth uh, for an engineer who is probably a chemical engineer like you in a plant like this? The LP program is curated in a way that uh, we get a position of an assistant manager when we join here. So uh, we are skipping few levels as an engineer but that is not exactly skipping, we are learning it, we are just learning it at a very fast pace. What I believe that slow and sturdy these days doesn't uh, win the race, it's about speed which is one of our core values. Another one is passion, if you are passionate about your work then the, uh, the work doesn't feel like work at all. So the values of ABG are really strong and it aligns with my values so I feel uh, good working. So we'll talk about your uh, work and what you do here and how this entire machinery works to provide us the cement that we all need. But before that, let's roam around this vicinity a little and uh, you tell me which are the places that you go and visit. Yeah, sure, let's go. So where are we exactly and what happens here? 
So basically we are in the central control room, we call it CCR and I start my day here. So uh, normally there are uh, my section heads, my managers, my HODs are all here and we had a short meeting over here. We look at the running parameters, what were the parameters the day before and we compare them, we analyze them and look that if we have to optimize them in a certain way or not. And after that, uh, we see if we are facing any challenges related to the plant. Because in this room, every uh, everything is operated from here only and it's all automated. Uh, so there's no manual intervention that is going on anywhere. And uh, if there is any uh, disturbance in the plant, we get the first signal from here. Right. So now that uh, you have told me about what exactly your day looks like, can you tell me a little bit about what exactly goes on in the making of cement if somebody is actually looking at the entire process what exactly happens and where do you fit in yeah okay uh, so we will start from the very uh first thing that is going on that is from the mining so we have captive mines and we are uh, raising limestone there so we get limestone from the mines and uh, we are, uh, then it is being crushed uh, and downsized to minus 50 mm and then put into the conveyor belts from there uh, a stack of pile is made of limestone and it gets reclaimed further additives like laterite and bauxite are added for fe203 and AL, al203 and then uh, these are again grinded into fine powder inside the raw mill from the raw mill uh, we are preparing raw meal which basically consists uh, the majority of it consists of limestone and further additives are added then the material goes into the blending silo to have so that in that way we ensure a homogeneous mixture uh, which is basically feed for our pyro process from there the material goes inside uh, the preheater in which it gets 95% uh, of calcination takes place and it gets heated up to 850 degrees celsius the whole clinkerization process starts at 1450 degrees celsius and uh, this is the part where we form where we get the nodules of clinker from there it needs to be cooled down for uh, or grind it into the cement. For the cooling process, we send the material, uh, we send the clinker inside the cooler, and from there it travels to the cement mill. And further additives are added, uh, which is strictly based on the type of cement that we are making. So we in this plant are making four kinds of cements, and additives are added accordingly. From there, it goes to the packing plant, and that's how we get our cement. I think you've given a crash course on how to make cement and what you do here. Uh, we'll get to know more about uh, your learning, your mentorship that you're receiving here and the kind of time that you have spent here. But I would like to see what you just said and uh, be part of the processes as much as I can and show our audience as well as to how cement is made and manufactured. Yeah, sure. Let's just proceed towards the plan. <coughs> Alright, um, this might look a little jarring to the eyes of people who are watching this particular video because we are not technically in the plant anymore. Uh, we are probably at a place where the journey of the plant starts and you probably might be able to tell us better what exactly is there behind us that we are seeing from here. So basically these are the uh, limestone mines and uh, this is where we get majority of our raw material from. 88% of raw material comes from here and list are just added in the process as I told earlier as additives laterite and bauxite. Anjali, I'm sure that your learning has been immense uh, through all these years that you have spent. I'm sure every day you are learning from the people that you're working with. How do you see your future to be from here uh, in Aditya Birla Group? Well, I see Aditya Birla Group as a pool of opportunities because uh, we get we have this thing that we can change businesses as well. And Aditya Birla Group is in metals business, it's in pulp and fiber, it's in uh, carbon black business, it's in a lot of businesses and not in India, even overseas as well. So I see it as a pool of opportunities for me to learn and grow and learn about other uh, possibilities. Uh, in my future so right and and what's the final advice that you want to leave people like you probably two three years back when you were in your college looking for companies to join 
uh, what would be your last piece of advice for them my last piece of advice for my younger generation to come would be that knowledge is power and uh, if you know about a thing you will definitely grow and learning is a continuous process you keep learning at each step of the way and one thing that you should always always remember is that just be yourself and i wish you all the very best for your future ahead i hope that you uh, get to chase the dream that you have set for yourself and i hope that you learn more uh, in the course and i hope that you work with many many such people who give you life lessons that adds up to your whole experience if you have learned something from this episode uh, do tell us in the comments below what you liked about this uh, video and uh, if you want to ask more questions to anjali you will get an opportunity and get to meet her uh, in the conversations cafe elp webinar that we will soon be hosting do register for it find the link in the description below and do tell us which is your favorite part for anjali's journey thank you very much anjali for joining us in and i hope that you achieve all the success in life Thank you so much Paul for giving me this opportunity it was really a great insight for me